The neighbor, the, um, the, the miracle moment, I just want to show yes. the audience. They're running around at 5 o'clock in the morning. They can't get anybody to open the door. Finally, right. this happens at something like 5.30 in the morning. Here's for all of you to watch at home. Thank you. Heart. Bless her heart, that neighbor who let her in. God knows what would have happened if she hadn't. She lets them in. She feeds them. She calls the police. Unbelievable. And they you know, Chris, say to they her, actually went door to door. Go they ahead. actually were going door to door. And some people were, you know, in today's world, you just don't want to open your door for anyone. Uh, but this woman, a single mom, uh, took it upon herself to bring them in. And thank God she did. As you mentioned, she saved their life. The nurse documented this with all the pictures. I lost you there for a second, Jeff, but they, she took these pictures to make sure that everything was documented. She called the EMT. The kids told her that there's another set of twins and that only the twins were treated the way they were, that they had to live in like the, a closet and the other kids lived in like the laundry room and the abuse was much more severe for the twins. Is that your understanding? Yeah, that's what we've heard, too. But again, we haven't uh, interviewed any of those children or the, the parents at this point. Uh, and we're hoping to do that. But that is exactly what we're hearing as well. Uh, the kids were very calm, uh, kind of an eerie calm, but the, they were very truthful and very forthcoming about what they had been through. So there's no reason to uh, disbelieve their story about the other twins. They're so uh, undersized as well. They're so undersized, which, as you know, you and I both know from these kinds of cases, is not unusual when kids are that uncared for. Right. Um, even at their age, 16, you know, it's not a typical 16-year-old who even knows if they were allowed to go to school. They had just moved into this area from Baton Rouge a couple of weeks earlier, so they were new to the situation. But in looking at the facts here, the mother had a pre-existing case in 2012 for having a five-year-old abuse allegations because of severe burning uh, that was was suggested to have been the kid being held underwater. I wonder if one of these two kids is that kid, because 10 years later, a five-year-old would be 15 or 16. It's a really good question, uh, Chris, and we're all looking into that as well. Uh, it's mentioned in the court documents when they were filed on here for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon here in Harris County. But again, uh, we don't know the situation in Louisiana, what exactly took place as far as uh, punishment, anything like that. But that is certainly something the investigators are looking into. And that could uh, certainly uh, hurt this particular couple uh, once they're uh, found guilty, if so, and uh, sentenced. Are uh, they the, denying? The previous record will come into effect. Are they denying? Pardon? Are they denying, to your understanding? Are the parents denying any of this? No, I have not heard anything about their demeanor or if they're uh, remorseful or anything at this point. Again, we're waiting to get them back into Harris County so we're able to uh, actually interview them ourselves. How heavy could the charges be? Right now they're facing, and again, this is just, we haven't even talked to them yet, but aggravated assault with a deadly weapon of a family member. It's a first degree felony for her, I believe a third degree felony for him. And uh, the first degree could go anywhere from five to 99 years if convicted. What is the deadly weapon? What happened exactly? Well, uh, in the report that the district attorney took, it, uh, the deadly weapon was actually a uh, oven cleaner that they sprayed constantly in the uh, children's mouths. Jeez. They also hit him with curtain rods and with extension cords. And you could see on the young man's side there, they had quite a few cuts that were healing already. But the deadly weapon was uh, basically chemicals and uh, also the, uh, the extension cord and the curtain rod, Chris. My God, have you ever seen anything like this before? I have not. You know, uh, I was a television reporter for 31 years covering the police. Uh, I remember Andrea Yates when she mm. uh, drowned her four children here, five children here in the Clear Lake area just outside of Houston. It brings back just horrible memories. And then you brought up that other family uh, nationally. So, yeah, we're seeing it. It makes you wonder how much this is going on behind closed doors that we don't know about. So I'd like to remind everybody, if you think you know something, if you see something, say something, because it's actually we could have we could convict uh, the, the young man there, the boyfriend, even if he didn't do anything because he witnessed it. He knew what was going on, and in that presence, you're guilty already. He is not the father, biologically, of these kids, to our understanding. They have different that's names. Right. Supposedly, that's the situation. But as you said, if you're there, uh, you're going to pay a price. And that's correct. we'll wait and hear what their side of it is. You're welcome back here to tell us, please. We'll stay on this.